Hey there, in this video we will go through my code which I wrote for the Sudoku solver. But first, let's look how the outcome looks like. Now here is the code which I wrote. First let's look at the top. Here I included iostream for output and the array. As you can see I defined a struct here called cell. I will use the cells to create the sudoku. A cell in the sudoku has a number and a block index. Also I have a boolean which should tell if a cell is already solved. Underwards I simplified the 2D array to sudoku. It will be easier now to read and type out this 2D array. Here we have the declaration of the functions. So let's move on to the main function. Here is our 2D array. Afterwards we have an, another 2D array which is the Sudoku we have to solve. Here I loop through that Sudoku and assign all of the cells numbers to the Sudoku which will be solved later on. I also calculate the current block index for the cell. And then I pass the index to the cell. If the given cell is not a zero, that means it is already solved. I put the curly braces here, as you probably know if a variable is defined in a scope, it will be seen only in that area. And if we get outside of this scope, the variables will be removed from the stack memory. Next we print the Sudoku. Then we call the solve cell function, in which we overgive our sudoku and the wind x codes. We start from the top left corner, so the zeros are passed over. Let's look how the function looks like. Now that's the most important part of this whole program. Here is a static bool, which says true whenever the sudoku is completely solved. You can remove the print function if you don't want to print the sudoku every time the algorithm tries to guess a cell. In the for loop we check if on the given position the cell is already solved or if we can place the number on the y and x position. Before we go any further let's see what the function is all about. The first thing we do here is we get the block on which the cell is on. We go through the whole block and check if the same number appears there. If it's true, that means we can't place the same number in the block, so return false. Next we go through the vertical line to check if the same number appears. If so, we return false. Else if, we check the same but on the horizontal line. If there is no identical number, that means we can place it. Back to where we left off, we check here if the cell is not solved. If it's not, we assign the cell's number to the number from the loop. Afterwards, we increment the coordinates. If it's the last cell in the Sudoku, the function sets the solved bool to true. So, we check then if the Sudoku is not solved yet. If it's true, then we try to solve the next cell. We can see the recursion there already. In case we get out of the function back here, we check if the sudoku is solved. If it's valid, we return true. This is actually the exit point of the recursion. It goes completely back to the first call in main. In else case that means there went something wrong. The guesses we made are not valid. So we take a step back and decrement the position. If the cell on that position is solved, we again take a step back. But in other case we keep guessing here until we get it right or we run out of all possible numbers for this cell. Then outside we check if the sudoku is solved yet. If not we return false, otherwise we return true. This here is called backtracing algorithm. And finally back to the main function, we look if the sudoku was successfully solved. Lastly we print out the solution to the screen. So that's it, I hope you could understand my code. Thanks for watching.